Well, here we are. It is Friday, June 30th, 2023. And this, of course, is the weekly video. We do these on Fridays, go over what's been happening in the auction world. Any good auctions have come and gone. We'll talk about the values and how they did and what the things were. And uh, we do other videos during the week, too. We just did one yesterday. Uh, I did one sort of a personal thing on uh, uh, an area that I've collected in for, for many, many years. And we, we, we all collect different things. And uh, that was something that I do. And I hope you take a look at it. Uh, one thing is I wanted to mention was, and, I, and a few of you I've, I've talked with about it, a, a, a number of you have said, well, you know, how about books? Where can we get good books? And I said, well, you can usually get them on Amazon. The problem is, is that there's a lot of searching you have to do on there, and uh, uh, sometimes you're don't, not sure which ones to get. Uh, because there's so many uh, Chinese and Japanese art reference books out there. So what we did was we went to Amazon and we, we plucked out the ones that we have um, and the ones that we, we like in particular, maybe by authors that we like in particular. And if you want to find them, you can find them on the homepage. Uh, if you scroll down, uh, the green box on, in information and shopping, um, there's this uh, logo right here and you can click on it and it'll take you over and there's a, a page with a whole bunch of books on it and uh, it'll pull them in it, every, each time you go in and out of there it, it'll 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 pull it in and refresh and it should stay pretty pretty uh, consistent about uh, what's available and what's not available on there and you'll see the uh, books come in as, as this page calls over to eBay say I mean over to Amazon saying what have you got and uh, we set this up through an affiliate arrangement we have with them. And uh, uh, if you're looking for books, we plucked out, I think, some really good ones, some really nice examples. Uh, Qing porcelain in particular, uh, Ming porcelain, uh, export wares, that sort of thing. And uh, we're going to be adding on it. There's some, there's some Japanese pieces. We're going to be adding some books on Japanese art and so forth. Right now it's Chinese, but eventually it'll load up with all this uh, Japanese art reference books, Amari, Kutani, uh, Netsky's Inrose, and so forth. And uh, then at the bottom, there's a, a big section uh, with a, a few books in particular that I happen to like a lot. Uh, one of them, of course, is Leaping the Dragon's Gate, um, which is the Dragon Gate, which is the Butler Collection, which is uh, now available. And this is another great book here, The uh, Treasures from the Unknown Reign, Shunji Period. Um, also uh, part of that same uh, interest in uh, transitional wares and so forth and down and then to silks. So check it out. Um, uh, you, you might find something in there that you need or want. And it's also linked over on the um, uh, newsletter page. We threw a link in there for it. It says uh, here is a big red arrow, new Amazon books. So do check it out. Uh, you know, when in doubt, buy a book. It's like, as people say, uh, and it's important to build a good reference library. Um, if you're serious about learning about all this material and you have an area that is especially of interest to you, uh, get the reference book on it. Don't don't try to uh, you know reinvent the wheel. Um, get some information from people who have been doing it for a long time. It, it'll make it a lot more interesting. It'll make you a lot more assured in what you're doing, and uh, you'll 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 and you'll learn a lot. You'll learn a lot if if you read the books. Don't just look at the pictures. I know there's a tendency to go through these books and look at the pictures and say, oh, that's amazing, that's amazing. You'll remember the piece better if you read about it. Um, and I can't say that often enough. You really, you need to read the material and learn why something is what it is and where it came from and how it was evolved over time and all that. It's a, it's a very, uh, it's a fun process and I, and I hope you do it. The other thing I wanted to mention was, as you know, on the newsletter page each week, we insert um, uh, videos down here. And you're going to see this week a third video, one that, that it, I, we didn't make, but it's, this is a personal thing. Um, in the town of Gloucester, where I live, every year in this in this just i just finished up it's called saint peter's fiesta and that big thing in the middle there is a telephone pole covered with grease and uh it's been a tradition here for nearly a hundred years it's a it's a it's a it's a it's sort of a game that was brought over from sicily where the people go register for this and it's a very dangerous thing that they do and they go up on here many of them have been drinking <laughs> some of them haven't but a lot of them have and they have to walk to the end of that pole on the grease to grab the flag and uh, it draws a huge crowd. This is this is sort of just as it's getting underway. And by the end of the time this is over, there are thousands and thousands of people on the beach in the foreground that you can't see. And then this this scene of boats expands out for probably half a mile. Um, a lot of people go to this. It's very hilarious. Um,
And in this video, they interview people who have done it over the years. These are Gloucester people. They're, it's a wonderful culture. Uh, it is an extremely dangerous. They've busted ribs, broken, <laughs> fractured skulls, everything. It's terrible. But it is something that that is sort of a rite of passage around here that people do. Um, it is a very rough thing. And uh, guys uh, come back to do this. They've gone off on their careers, and they work in the tech sector. They work in New York and finance. They do all these things, but they come back every year. to. It's called Walk on the Pole. And uh, there's a very good documentary that was done by CBS Boston. They produced this. It's about 40 minutes long, and it talks to the characters and the individuals and, and why it is what it is in our town. And uh, it's, it's a really great tradition. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, it's just one of those things you have to see. It's the only place in the United States. It's the only place out of Sicily where they do this. And uh, it draws massive crowds. And uh, it's it's pretty wild. And the characters in here are worth sort of meeting on the video when you get to know them. Uh, they're, they're a very colorful bunch of guys. I know a number of them. And uh, I, we've been here for a long time at this point. And um, it's a, a really fun thing. So do take the time, uh, if you can, to watch the video. I think you'll enjoy it. All right. And uh, let's see here. Uh, and you get a real sense of what it's like living on this island because it is an island. And uh, they, one of them even talks about how uh, there were families here in Gloucester um, up until the 1950s that never owned an automobile because there was no reason to own one because you weren't leaving the island. You weren't going anywhere. And the population was fairly compacted downtown um and uh it, they built a, a bridge came in um uh in the 1950s when they finished the route 128 uh, highway and uh, it ended up with with a big bridge the piat bridge coming into gloucester so at any rate uh it's a huge expansion bridge now but uh, this is the cast of characters, and um, you may remember the movie The Perfect Storm. A lot of them um, uh, were, were are people that are in that business, the, like the ones that lost their lives on The Perfect Storm. And uh, they talk about the dangers of fishing, and it is the most dangerous job there is. So anyway, uh, I think you'll enjoy it. And uh, let's move on now. But I just wanted to throw that in there, a little pitch for my town. That's all. All right. What's been going on? Um, <clears throat> Rob Michaels uh, finishing up his sales. Uh, looks like, uh, from what I saw, he had very good results. Uh, he, he got some very nice prices for things, things, average things, brought average prices, but, you know, interesting things uh, that he, because they, they do turn up interesting things there because of its location. And last week, a number of you corrected me. I still think of Netherlands and, and Belgium as being part of the same thing it they somebody rightly pointed out they separated in 1840 but i i, I and, and to me, I always think of Bruges and Belgium, uh, Belgium and, and the Netherlands as being one and the same, which is stupid, I realize, but uh, it's totally my bad. And a number of you pointed it out. You're all right, Belgium and Bruges. Uh, anyway, it's a, a place in the world that had a pivotal um, influence um, on, on the China trade. And uh, as a result, there's an enormous amount of great material there. And some of the things did quite well. Um, one of them was this very, very nice um, Memorial Provinces dish. Uh, with uh, but with the arms of uh, Brabant on it, it's a well-known one. Many of you have seen it before. Um, ended up doing very well. This was a nice one. It was a good. I think it was fairly large. Ended up selling for fourteen thousand six hundred. Yeah, it was forty-three centimeters in diameter. So it was about sixteen, seventeen inches in, in width. It went for fourteen thousand six hundred and seventy-two dollars plus premium. So you're up around twenty thousand for the plate by the time you're done. But it's a rare bird, and it was a big one. Size matters with those things. Uh, and then this, the leaping uh, or the, the, the lotus uh, dishes with the leopards on them. I, I mentioned these last week because I thought they were so nice. Um, and they ended up selling for $3,300 plus premium. So they came in at around 4000 I thought they were very, very nice. I thought they were lovely. And I love I love plates with animals, lions and uh, or leopards. Uh, monkeys, uh, horses, of course, and all that on them. And this was a nice pair of plates, and it did well. About 3,261 plus premium, so about $4,000 for the pair of plates. Very nice. And uh, the little teapot we looked at, uh, I thought it would bring around 500 because that's the last one that sold. Well, this one brought a lot more. This one brought 815 plus. So with the buyer's premium, you, you're coming in at around um, uh, about $1,000. 
but very nice little teapot, a rare form, compressed, good looking and inexpensive to ship. So if, you're, if shipping is a concern, I always think of the smaller things. And this was something that went through Doyle's this weekend and it went through it as a relative bargain. Um, it went, so this is a, a very nice Kung Chi period, uh, Femi Ver or a Wutsai, uh, 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 cistern. It's missing its lower dish, but it's a big one. This thing is 16 inches tall. This was a very large example. Uh, and it was quite nice. It looked to be in fairly good condition. The spout was missing, but they often are missing spouts. Often they were given metal spouts on these things. It looks like it's been pulled out, but, uh, that's the way it is. It's got a, it's got an old line down the back, but really nice example and uh, it sold for just nine hundred dollars plus premium i think that was a very very good buy and then chris uh, bonhams had their sale wrapped up this week wrapped up yesterday on the on, or two days ago on the 28th and they had their sort of uh collector sale the decorative art they call it the decorative art sale and all that really means is, is that most of the things are going to sell for under fifteen thousand dollars um, they, it's not one of their high end sales, but they have some awfully nice things in here. Um, and I, I always say people should, you should really think about, uh, checking out the, the bottom sale, the decorative sales, the online sales, same at Christie's and Sotheby's, all of them, uh, cause there are some good buys in here. And if you take the time to go through it, um, you'll see what I mean. There are things in here that's in, that in, in a few examples don't bring as much as they bring on eBay because it's a, it's a little bit of a different crowd. And um, uh, some of them are, are missing things and so forth. And uh, it's hard to explain why some people are intimidated uh, when it comes to the big auction houses. Uh, don't be. They're delighted to do your do business with you. Bonhams is more than happy to register you and talk to you and answer questions. It's what they do. They're really good at it. So uh, 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 check it out. But in here, they had some very nice examples of a really rare pair of uh, um, tobacco leaf rectangular salts export pieces. Those are very rare in that pattern, in that in that palette. And they've all, they sold for just $704, which I think was really reasonable. And there were a number of uh, these tobacco leaf plates in here and things that went for $1,000, $1,100, $1,200. Nothing unusual about that. Those are not sky high prices. Uh, so I, I just I, I can't emphasize enough. Uh, take take the time to study some of these auctions and take a look at them, especially the lots, the things that have multiple items in it, uh, like this lot here with the, with the, with the two T strainers, jade handles, the, all of these bits uh, for twenty four hundred dollars. Break them up and figure out in your head how much that lot's worth. Somebody's going to triple his money on that lot if he's a dealer bought that. The, that whole lot will end up getting broken down and sold off and probably net back a, about about a three hundred percent profit it for someone um uh there are certain lots that will do that so calculate those lots in your head before the auction begins and leave bids accordingly across the board sprinkle them in always leave bids that's that's the the, the true key to making money and and building a collection because if you buy lots uh you you if you see something in a lot you like buy the lot sell off the pieces you don't want and keep the one you do and very often you'll end up owning it for free uh, it's a real good way to build a collection. A lot of smart collectors have done that over the years, many, many, many times. Um, uh, I, I know one fellow uh, a number of years ago, a very wealthy guy, he bought a Bactrian Tang Camel and a Bactrian, um, uh, uh, a Bact uh, no, uh, and, and a Tang Horse. Uh, they came out of one collection. Um, a dealer got them. He offered them both of them. The man bought both. He sold off the one that he didn't want. He got all of his money back. And this was six figures. This was a huge amount of money. Uh, so you can make money um, at all levels dealing with lots. All right. Don't be afraid of them. All right. Now on to uh, what's been happening over at eBay. They had a they had a pretty good they had a pretty good week. A lot of the things did quite well. One of the things I want to start with is that little Takuri, that little Japanese lacquered bottle I like so much. It brought what we thought it would bring. I guess it, I think we said between two and three hundred, and it ended up selling for two hundred and seventy six dollars. This was a lovely bit of work. Um, this a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bottle is wooden and then lacquered. Um, a, a carved wood. We're getting back to carved wood again. Maybe that's why I liked it so much. Uh, but this was a nice piece. It had a break in the top, uh, but it's still a worthy piece to own, worthwhile owning and loving and enjoying and having around your house. Uh, a piece of it broke out there, which they restuck and a little more of it up here. But uh, when you look at the piece overall, it's just a nice example. And uh, I can certainly see owning this over another piece that's perfect, but not as interestingly well done. This one was very well done with silver and gold, uh, 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 silver and gold decoration. 
uh, $276. Remember, there's no buyer's premium on eBay, so it's not a bad deal. $30 in shipping, very reasonable. And then there was this, this um, uh, Hexing Du figure, uh, porcelain on a biscuit figure um, with the deer. Uh, I like this a lot. It actually brought a bit more than we thought. We, we I think we said 800 to 1,000. It went over that. And, and it was a nice piece, though. It was a truly a nice piece. And we're a little over it. Went for $1,225, but a very attractive example, about nine inches tall. It was good size. And, uh, it was, again, something something worth owning. I love the sculptural quality of it, I have to say. And then this, the um, Chinese golden lacquer uh, um, uh, uh, mortal uh, lamp with this amazing shade. Um, it's a really lovely shade. And those of you that have bought shade, a nice jade plaque on top, um, which you see these often used, but this was a really attractive lamp, uh, beautifully done. The figure was probably made during the 19th century. Um, and there is a, uh, the, the lamp company on top of, oh, this is from, oh, this is from Farmers, New York. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, Farmer was like, uh, he was he was a, a business that was known for making decorative stuff. He was basically a, a really fancy decorator, and you will co occasionally come across pieces the way Yamanaka used to take uh, uh, a piece of jade and a brush pot. And so I have a Yamanaka piece. I'll bring it and show you all sometime. And it's a, a Lang Yao brush pot with sil sterling silver base and a jade dragon head finial that lifts off. And uh, uh, they were known for making the, the same kinds of things at Farmer and Company. And this is one of his pieces. I didn't see that last week. I wish I'd looked. Um, and this is this was their, their company name. And they did all these beautiful custom um, shades out of Chinese silk and so forth. And this very attractive figure on a conforming stand and so forth. This nice thing. And then you have these carnelian um, uh, beads and so forth at the top. Uh, this ended up selling for $1,025. And without the farmer attribution, I thought $1,025 was a really good thing uh, because it's it's such a statement. It's an elegant thing. The jade the jade on the top of it is probably worth four or five hundred. Uh, and this this is a very very nice example. But keep your eye out for farmer. Think of farmers in New York. All right. Uh, he was in New York City during the 1920s and 30s. Uh, they did good things. They made really interesting things, very innovative. And occasionally they turn up at big desk sets from farmers with all Asian uh, um, uh, elements built, incorporated into it. will turn up at uh, Christie's and Sotheby's. There's some very interesting pieces. And then over to this, this little Celadon glazed figure of the man carrying the child. Um, uh, sort of a, a funky, folky thing, uh, but nice looking and ended up selling for $661. I don't think the seller knew too much about it. He just said Chinese antique porcelain figure. Fair enough. And uh, people found it and uh, liked it enough to pay $661 for it. And it wasn't terribly big. This was, um, what was this, nine inches tall. Um, so it's, it's not a real big one, but a good size, good enough size. And uh, and then over to this, the uh, the, the, the banner um, with the dragons on the corner and rue heads in the middle. This was nice looking. Um, and I thought this would bring a little more. Uh, this was a very nice looking thing with this brown ground. It's a 19th century example. It's done in the older style, but this to me looks like 19th century silk. Uh, but beautifully done all the way around. Really, really attractive. His photographs are a little small. If you do sell on eBay... Uh, upload good size photographs, you know, a thousand to fifteen hundred pixels anyway. Don't mess around with these three by five, three hundred to five hundred pixel images. They'll load faster. You'll save yourself fifteen seconds on setting up the listing, and it'll end up costing you about ten percent, twenty percent of the value. Uh, this one did okay. I think it could have brought more. Um, I would have thought that would bring closer to fifteen or sixteen hundred, uh, but you really couldn't see the details very well. Maybe the seller will. Uh, um, hear this video and say next time make your pictures bigger pal and um, so people can really zoom in and see the details especially on things like silk it's really important um, this sold for $1146 so somebody got a very 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 nice buy on that hanging and uh, this is um, was the ceramics and collectibles and it seems to me we saw this I, some of you will have to remind me but I think we saw this same teapot uh, a number of months ago at an auction over in Europe 
and uh, it's, it's it went for about a thousand or eleven hundred dollars, and uh, well, one very like it. I won't say it's the same one because I don't know for sure, but it looks awfully similar, and it's a fairly rare type. This sort of noir ground black body with these rose enamels on it. Uh, I, I commented at the time because I remember I liked it a lot. I thought it was a very striking piece of porcelain. And uh, this time around, it, it, it did. I think it, it brought more than it did wherever. If it's the same one, it brought more than it did then. Uh, it brought 1625. And as I recall, some maybe you can correct me if you, any of you remember, but I think it was around 11 or 1200 last time, or 1100 or 1000, something like that. Maybe not. Maybe not. But I thought it was. Uh, anyway, that, it was a, regardless. I shouldn't. I shouldn't go on about the value, the price. This was a really interesting and very unusual teapot. Very, very unusual with those colors. Really unusual, and very, and and it was effective. It worked. All right, and then down to here. This was the uh, the big uh, who form vase with the uh, overglazed enamels. Um, this sold last. Uh, I guess this sold on Monday or so, and we talked about it. I just thought it was a real nice example. I just thought it was very pretty. The the the, the colors were compatible and so forth. Here's the foot on it. It had been lamped, obviously. Uh, it had very nice uh, uh, brown dressings on the on the masks and so forth, and uh, I liked it a lot. And, and it did fine. In the end, it brought twelve hundred ninety one dollars with a hole in the bottom. And, uh, and I, and whoever, if one of you got it, put it back to being a lamp. It would make a striking table lamp. Don't be afraid of doing that. If you own vases and you don't put flowers in them regularly, use them as lamps. All right. They're supposed to do something. Um, I know they're fun to look at, but, but vases were meant to hold flowers or to have a function. And I always, I always feel, I feel badly when I see a vase standing empty somewhere and somebody should run down to a flower shop and grab a pile of something and stuff them in there and make it look good. All right. Just a thought. <clears throat> and now on to this. This, this, this silk sold last week um, uh, for $621. Here it is. And we talked about it. We thought it was a nice one. And it's backlisted, I noticed, this week. So for whatever reason, the buyer didn't pay for it, which is a real pain in the neck. If you buy something on eBay, pay for it, all right? Um, I've, I've long advocated with eBay whenever I've talked to them that people who don't pay their bills on the first time should be suspended instantly for 30 days, no repeat, no appeal. And if you have two or three of these that go unpaid, you're thrown off the account, the site forever in the real auction world. If you don't pay your auction bills, uh, you'll be blacklisted among the auction houses very, very rapidly. Uh, when we had auctions here in new England, I would have people come up to me, uh, auctioneers from other auctions. Hey, there's a guy here today that he, he owes us money, $10,000 from an auction three weeks ago and his check bounced. And we'd have to go over and tell the guy his bids weren't welcome. And we did it. We were no problem doing it. It's better doing it then than doing it later. And it upset some people, but uh, uh, you've got to pay your bills in the auction world. It's it's, a sort, of, it's, a, it's sort of an honor thing. Um, uh, if, you, if you're deadbeat and you don't pay them, uh, you shouldn't be allowed to attend auctions. That's all there is to it. I know they put it up with it in China a lot. I know that the Poly Group one year reported they had 50% of their lots that were unpaid for in one year. Uh, and because the management didn't have the courage to kick people out and not let them bid, and there was so much shenanigans going on over there, I think they just realized it was hopeless. Uh, any rate, uh, Sotheby's and Christie's cracked down hard on that to their credit and uh, we started began requiring, that's right, that's why the auction houses began requiring money up front, uh, the deposits on, especially on major lots, uh, because they were having, getting blowback from consigners saying, well, you know, I've heard there's a payment problem. I want, I want, I want somebody, if they're going to bid on my thing, they're going to put up a cash deposit. And it became a real thing. And now they do it. They do it routinely. Um, uh, uh, and and auction, other auction houses around Europe do it now too. I noticed that uh, my friend down at Marco Polo Auctions in, in uh, Italy, he was doing that on, on some lots because he was a new auction house and you can't stick his neck out. You, you could go bankrupt in a hurry doing that. All right. Any rate, uh, this was a very, very nice silk. It's up again. It'll be on the newsletter page this week. Uh, and then there was this. This was nice. This was a tur uh, They call these turquoise matrix, tur carved turquoise. I like this. I've always liked uh, turquoise carvings. I had a huge one years ago of Guan Yin. Uh, it was about 18 inches tall. It was amazing. Any rate, uh, this is very attractive. Nice one. Probably late Qing, early Republic. Ended up selling for $421. Nice looking, though. Nice looking. And then this, the pear, the pear shaped vase with the foo lions on it. And the, uh, the, is this the one that had a drilled bottom on top of it? Yeah, it did right there. Um, a, a drilled base, 19th century vase, beautifully decorated though. 
quite lovely decoration on this. This was the main thing this had going for it. Um, I think a number of people thought it was probably 18th century. It wasn't. It was clearly a 19th century piece, but very fine quality, beautiful quality, and a very nice even cobalt color and a good shade. Uh, sold for $4,494. That's a pretty strong price. Um, I thought that would have brought a little bit less than that, maybe around 2500 to 3400 2500 to 3000 I think a couple of people really, really loved it, and off it went. I'm not saying it was a bad buy. If you if you went to a, a good antique, a, a good Chinese porcelain gallery, this this vase would cost you about eight thousand dollars. So um, reasonable from that standpoint. All right, and then this, the little bronze that uh, we talked about last week, this Chinese bronze. That, it looks like it's one of those Japanese copper examples. This wasn't, though. This was a Chinese example. Heavy, thick. The Japanese copies tend to be very thin and sort of flimsy. This thing was quite heavy. Uh, I think it weighed a kilo. And uh, for, for an incense burner, that's quite a lot. Small incense burner. And uh, it did very well. At the end, it brought uh, $1,208. I really liked it. I thought this was a very handsome, visually a successful thing. I, I really did. Uh, I liked that a, a great deal. And uh, um, a nice patina. If one of you got it, just wipe it down with a damp rag once a year and call it a day. It's very attractive. <clears throat> and then this, the pair of uh, Kangxi cups that we'd mentioned last week that we thought were pretty nice. Uh, apparently, a few people thought they were pretty nice too, and they ended up selling for $250. And uh, that's just about the sweet spot where, the, where they were, the value was. But these had unway decoration in them, remember. Um, and that's a that's a, a value added. If they didn't have the Anway decoration, they probably would have brought 100 less or 75 less. But these were very, very nice. And this hidden decoration carved into the porcelain is called Anway. And there it is. You can see it here. You see all that work up in there. And that's what that is. Uh, very pretty. Very nice example. And again, not terribly expensive. And they're genuine. Something you can own that's genuine um, from an early period and good looking for a couple of hundred dollars. And that's 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 the, the fun way to collect. Um, and then onto this, the the, the, the silk uh, grouping, uh, uh, silk temple banners. Uh, and, the, and the deal with these is that they, they look like Ming examples. Um, and uh, the Ming ones are very, very expensive. Uh, there's some ex examples of this kind of silk in the British Museum. And uh, is it the Indianapolis... Um, uh, Indianapolis Art Museum are the other ones with the big silk robe collection. They have pieces like this. Some of them are Ming, yeah, but these were very finely done. They're not Ming though. They're they're later, uh, Qing Dynasty, but uh, very nice quality. These big long strips. Uh, they, some of them had a little bit of damage, a few poles in them, and so forth. And uh, in the end, they did fine because silks are all doing fine these days. They brought nineteen hundred dollars with the damage, but these were these were these were Qing, not Ming, but they looked Ming. Um, and, uh, uh, I, I think he, how did he date them? He didn't date them at all. He didn't even, well, maybe he did down here. Uh, Chinese silk banners, all are well-decorated dragons up to the 19th century. He did date them properly too. Um, that's what, that's what they are, but they look Ming. If you're looking at them saying they look older, it's because they're done in the Ming style pretty much. <clears throat> all right. So that was about it for the week, but it was a good week. Um, and, and I've noticed that, uh, China trade things, um, uh, are, 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 are being bought pretty steadily. And I think it's because you don't have to worry too much about being copies and so forth. So that's sort of a nice thing. All right. Now, hopping over to some things that are coming up. There's a couple of strange things I really want to point out. So if you, if you especially if you buy Japanese stuff, stick around for a few minutes because there's some pieces in here that are quite good and they are mislabeled. This is going to be in the newsletter this week. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it's mislabeled as Chinese. This is not Chinese. This is Japanese, and it's Gutani. And the picture is the pictures are terrible because you didn't. They, they don't enlarge very much. Let me see if we can um, find some way to get these in here. Um, there we are. This is a really lovely piece of Gutani, uh, late Meiji period. Uh, a beautifully done, very fine, thin, translucent porcelain. There's the mark on the bottom and uh, so forth. This is a nice, I know that I know that you've got some Katani buyers out there. Uh, you want to check this plate out. It's a, it's a very, very attractive piece of porcelain. Uh, it is, uh, how big is this one? Probably 10 inches or so, I suspect. Um, 19 centimeters, eight inches in diameter, just about, just about eight inches, a little under, but very pretty, very, very pretty. It's got one bid. It closes on Tuesday. It should bring, it should bring 175 to $250. 
It's a nice looking plate, very fine quality, and not a lot of wear. The gilding is all very, very nice on it, and that's important. Uh, and then this, this little cup. This is a sweet cup. If any of you buy 18th century Famille Rose, check this cup out. It looks like ones you've seen before, but look at it carefully. It's very different in many ways, um, and I, I think this is a very nice little cup. There's the middle of it. Uh, there it is. It's got like a double um, a lotus tip rim running around it. There's like extra rows of lotus, le lotus tips on it. Here's the picture of the back of it and the bottom with the vine coming out. It's just a striking little piece of porcelain. I, th I think it's quite lovely. And uh, of course it has, uh, there it is, it has no handle because they didn't put handles on the cups then. That's a later thing. Uh, but this is a very, very nice little wine or teacup uh and it looks like it's in good shape you want to check it doesn't i don't think that actually is a repair but you want to check with the with the seller to see if it is i don't think it is i think it's just the light it's up to uh, it's got one bid at 99 dollars. closes on sunday <clears throat> and this is nice this is coming from uh who is this somebody in oh somebody here in massachusetts west brookfield that's out near um amherst college all right now this this is the thing i i wanted to um, <clears throat> excuse me I'm a little hay fever today again. Uh, check out the the can of soda at the bottom. <laughs> this is a big porcelain, and it's it's they have they have a, the monumental signed Japanese porcelain vase Meiji period. That is correct. It's a big piece of Kutani. It looks like from what I can tell. Um, there's a mark on the bottom. Yeah, I think that's probably some sort of Kutani mark. There it is. Uh, nice looking big vase. This thing is a beast. It is, I think it's, what the heck was it, 35? Uh, hold on a minute, I'll tell you. 31 inches tall, 11 inches wide. This is a big vase, almost three feet tall. And uh, very attractively done and very unusually done. Looks to be Meiji period. I think the seller is right about that. Uh, the inside of it is amazing. It has to have a crack in it. I don't care about that. When was the last time you saw one of these? Um, and what's really neat about it, too, is the, uh, which I like a lot, is the um, uh, the contrast in the way that the neck comes in and goes very, very thin. And there's a nicely potted body. And then these two quick little handles coming off of it. I just like the composition combined with this decoration with this dragon it floating in gold dust. It's just absolute red dragon in gold. Very, very nice. Now here it is. It's up to. It, it closes on Sunday. It's only up to two hundred and sixty dollars. Um, the shipping is a little expensive. Um, uh, it's uh, according to this, it's one hundred and thirty dollars to ship this from uh, Newport, New Hampshire to here. This is oh, this is Steve, Coast to Coast Antiques. I just noticed that. Um, he's a guy. I, I know this guy. Uh, he, he's been. I don't know him. Well. I'm not. We're not pals or anything. But I've known. Him. He's been in the trade a long, 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 long time. Uh, Coast to Coast Antiques. He's a, a colorful guy. He works with his son. Nice family. And uh, he's got this up. Uh, it's a good piece of porcelain. He's a real picker too. This is he, 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 this guy hits auctions and sales constantly, and uh, he, he gets interesting things. So uh, do check that out. Do check that out. That's a nice look, especially if you're, if you're a Kutani buyer. Definitely check that out. It's a nice piece. And then over to here, this is uh, Stubsy Wubsy has this a very very nice uh, late Qing uh, or, or a late Qinlong to early Jai Jing period uh, vase done sort of in the European style with these gilded porcelain handles on the side and then immortals in the center, beautifully decorated, nice piece, but a very unusual type. This is a really unusual form. Um, uh, <clears throat> as you can tell, it doesn't particularly, it, it almost looks European in its shape and uh, uh, it's very attractive. And I, I don't know if this is technically even export wares. I think this was something that was made for the Chinese market and they, and they, but they had a lot of e European influence on it. But I like this a lot. I like that a lot. And it looks like it's in excellent condition with these very attractive lime green beads running around it. That's nice. Um, it's up to $7,633. It may not go up much more than that, but it might go to 10 or 12, 10 or 12, uh, rare things like this. And I don't have anything to base that on. I'm just saying that when you have a rare form in, in beautiful condition, lovely enamels, good, solid decoration, the gilding is all there. <clears throat> um, uh, they can they can jump at the end because people looking at it are going to say, I'm not going to find another one of these. I'm willing to pay an extra couple of thousand for it. And uh, so don't be surprised if that jumps up to 10 or 12,000. We'll check back and see how it does at the end of the week. 
next week. Uh, this very nice rose water bottle, probably for the Indian market or the Middle Eastern market. Nice Kang Shi rose sprinkler bottle. Uh, it's got four days to go. It's up to $429. How big is this? Uh, it's probably decent size, right? 19 centimeters, seven inches tall. Okay, it's a pretty standard size, but it's a nice one. It's in good condition. Should bring 800 to $1,200 pretty comfortably. And then um, uh, uh, this uh, we've already talked about. We don't talk about that again. And the last thing is this. Uh, this is a, a silver a, a bamboo pattern, um, a silver set that's up. And I don't know the seller. His username is Pick and Ain't Easy. Uh, he's based out of Chatsworth, California. And um, here's the set. Again, the pictures are too small. I don't know what's going on with eBay pictures these days, but the pictures seem to be getting smaller and smaller. Okay, it is marked Chinese silver, LW. Okay, and that is Luan Wu. He was a Shanghai silversmith. Um, very, very active uh, from the oh, 1870s or 80s up until about... He, actually, he was in business up until the outbreak of World War II, I think. This guy, Luan Wu in Shanghai. He was quite prolific. He did very high-end stuff, very fine quality stuff. Um, and uh, you'll find him in that book on uh, Chinese silver that's over in the in the bookcase. Um, I, I know I know he's in there because he, he's such a well-known silversmith. Uh, but at any rate, this is up to five hundred and four dollars. This ought to bring a thousand to fifteen hundred pretty easily, maybe a little bit more because he is so well known. Um, he's, he's one of the most well known. So uh, check that if you're a Chinese silver buyer, you want to take a look at that. That'll be in the newsletter. We are still working with 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 the con with the plug-in providers. And with eBay uh, uh, to try and figure out why their images aren't loading. And uh, it's not anything on our end. We've checked our end out completely, repeatedly, and everything is fine there. At all, Everything's working exactly as it should because uh, the same software we use to pull in, for example, eBay, we used to pull in live auctioneers under the global member pages. Same type of software. And all the live auctioneer stuff is pulling in absolutely fine. Um, and there's no problem with it. So it's something um, between either the content, the, the, uh, the, 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 the content being produced by eBay or there's a there's a glitch with, with their plugin as it relates to eBay because eBay keeps messing around with things. And um, um, every time they do it, it's like the tire baby. It makes it worse. So anyway, that's what's going on there. OK, have a great weekend. Have a wonderful Fourth of July. I hope you all have something planned. Take a minute to watch the story about the greasy pole in Gloucester. Um, if you got a, a couple of about, it's a it's a it's a, it's a little documentary. It's about forty eight minutes long. It's beautifully produced. The CBS affiliate in Boston did it. So and they've got you know they know what they're doing. Uh, and it's a it's a fun thing to hear, and you'll get a real sense of the town that uh, we live in here. And uh, it'll make you want to move. I think uh, it may make you want to move. That's what, generally what happens is we have a guest coming this weekend um, who's from um, families from Venice and uh, Venice, Italy, and he's coming to visit. And because uh, he's always wanted to come here, and uh, we're going to be getting him out with some lobsters, I think. All right, have a wonderful weekend. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and uh, if you want to see more like it. And uh, everybody seemed to like the video we did yesterday, so uh, we'll try to do more, maybe a few more of those. I guess, and uh, talk about things around here a little and uh, go on from that. All right. See you all next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.